Hello everyone and welcome back to Intro to GDNT. So today we're going to be jumping into the magical, mystical world of datums and datum feature references. Um, this is super important, okay? It's super important, but as with all these PowerPoints, they're ridiculously detailed. They go into so much more detail than you're going to need in most cases. So let's just say this. The, there are going to be sections that are very, very important for this. There will be sections that aren't quite as important. And I'll tell you what those are as we go through, and you'll probably guess it as we go through. The biggest point, though, is understanding the application and terminology. This is very, very important. So datum feature references identify features from which datums are established. What in the world does that mean? Okay, so first up, datum feature references. They're a part of your feature control frame. If you look in your feature control frame, there'll be a series of letters right there at the end. You only have it up to three, never more. Okay, there can be more letters, but it's a, it's a very strange situation. But there's only ever three little boxes, so there's only three datum feature references. Now, this is what datums are established from. Now, you don't see datum down here. You see the word datum, but you never see just plain datum. You see datum feature, datum feature symbol, um, but nothing else. So a datum is a theoretically perfect point, line, or plane. Your part is not perfect. This datum, which everything is being measured from, is perfect. You don't measure from the surface. You measure from this perfect datum, okay? Um, because your surface is all ziggity-zaggity. And so if I were to choose, okay, I'm measuring from the surface, I'm gonna measure here to here, I want to measure that same point, you're going to get a lot of different values. So we create a datum, this theoretically perfect line, point, or plane, and we measure from that. Now, the datum features are what we are going to build our datums off of. Datum features imperfect, datums perfect. Datum features imperfect, datums perfect. And so what we do is we take the true geometric counterpart, which is, well, I have this very jaggedy bottom plane, and I say, okay, well, I'm gonna make a plane that's perfect. I'm gonna to touch it as much as I can. So those are my two tallest points, and so I just make a perfect plane, and that becomes my datum, okay? I'm not caring about how this all zigzaggedy and that there's maybe the averages here. No, I'm not doing that, I'm just saying, if I was setting this on top of a perfect plane, it would be balancing on its highest points. And that is what's called the true geometric counterpart. And that's where my datum comes from. So it's used to establish the datum from my datum feature, okay? So datum is perfect. Datum is perfect. Datum features are imperfect. And we make this true geometric counterpart right here to determine where our datum is going to be. Okay. Now, you're thinking like, okay, perfect planes. When are we actually going to have a perfect plane? The answer is never. You, you don't actually have a perfect plane. I don't have one just like hanging on my closet. Oh, yeah, better get my perfect plane tool. No, it doesn't exist. What we use instead is a datum feature simulator. Now it's going to be something physical, so it's a tool or a tool surface that's going to simulate that perfect plane as best as it can. And it's going to then connect with that true geometric counterpart. So right here you see these phantom lines. That's just saying that that's that perfect plane right there that's touching all the top points of my bottom surface. I've also got a perfect plane right here which is touching all the top points of my tool surface. And we're going to connect those two together. Now, this tool surface, if you're going to use it as a datum feature simulator, so you are simulating something perfect or something imperfect, it better have very, very, very small tolerances, which means that it can't have more zigzags than your part. Otherwise, it's not like you're actually measuring anything. The, the errors are going to add up. However, in this class, we're not going to really worry about those errors. We're going to just assume that our datum features, our datum feature simulators are perfect. 
for most things. Um, now we don't always have to do this. There are physical and computer based simulation methods where we can figure out exactly what's going on. Um, there's things called coordinate measuring machines. Um, there's all kinds of tools which can scan something and get all the measurements and figure out all the datums from it. So like we're not having to use a physical tool, we use a digital one instead. And that is definitely the future. However, while I really want to get one of those for this class, they're very, very expensive. So I'm going to have to, it's going to take me some time before I can actually get one to show you. Though if I can find one, this way let me borrow, I will bring it into class to show you what a coordinate measuring machine or various other scanners look like and how they're used. Okay, so that'll be it for this time. We've talked about datums, we talked about datum features, um, and we also talked about the true geometric counterpart. So make sure this first like two slides are the most important for this entire one. So make sure you master those and you can actually write them down from memory more or less because they're going to be very helpful in understanding the rest. So thanks for listening and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.